Hey everyone, this is Bidupan here. Welcome to Mindful Talks, where I invite guests to talk about their knowledge and their experiences in various fields like health and wellness, spirituality, self growth, and many other topics. Today, I am with Emilia Ottman, who is an author and entrepreneur and a neuro linguistic programming coach. She is basically from Germany. Earlier, she was working in the corporates, but in 2007, she left her job and moved to Houston in Texas with her husband and started her first design business. Since then, she has been constantly reinventing herself. As a website designer and consultant, she helps female entrepreneurs start their dream business. She is also the co-host of a podcast by the name Mums in Biz Podcast, which focuses on supporting women and mums in life and business. She is the author of a book called It's Your Life, which will be available on Amazon from 12th November 2020 worldwide. The book talks about how we can change our thoughts and live the life we want to live, how we can overcome the fear and say yes to happiness, and how to let go of judgment and be happier for it. The book basically talks about how we can choose the life we want to live. She lived in four different countries with her husband and four children, and currently she calls Dubai as her home. She says that living your best life is a choice. Choose to believe in the good, see the positive in everything, and live the life of your dreams. Let's talk to her and find out how we can design our own life and make the right choices. I'm excited to talk to her. Let's get started. Hi, Amelia. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you very well. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on my show. Uh, so your book is about to come on 12th of November, right? Worldwide. Yes, Worldwide. exactly. Very exciting. One week from now, from recording. I don't know when you will publish this, but you know, yeah. 12th of November. Okay. So tell me what made you write a book? What made you become an author? Um, to be honest, the initial idea was because of my children. I have four children mm-hmm. and I don't like flying. And um, mm-hmm. as an expat living, I'm originally from Germany, but I live in Dubai with my family. Mm-hmm. So obviously I have mm-hmm. to fly, you know, some. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But one of my passions is also traveling. So I do fly a lot, even though I don't like it. And um, mm-hmm. well, when, when there is no pandemic. Um, and whenever I flew without my children, I, st- I, I was afraid that something might happen. So I wrote letters to them, just like with thoughts okay. and, you know, life lessons that I wanted to share with them once they are older. And I wrote mm-hmm. like in a book and I wrote letters and I left it on my bedside t- table just in case. And so that's how kind of the idea started. And then I thought it would be really cool if this was in a book and, you know, they would even my grandchildren can find this book on somewhere in the house, you know, like dusted, but they can read it. So like like mm-hmm. legacy, basically. So that was the the initial idea. And then I also blogged for my business and I started posting a bit more personal i started blogging more personal things and so and then i realized how many women were resonating and how Mm -hmm. it was helping some women you know like some especially women i'm saying women because it was especially women that um they were resonating with what i was saying and they had the same feelings and it always helps i think if somebody opens up and is honest about things and you feel less alone you feel you can, you know, it's more normal and you can cope with things. And yeah, and then I was sharing how I struggled in my life with things and how I was listening to other people too much and how I wasn't following my own dreams. And I was like thinking I couldn't do things, but then actually I could. So how I overcame those struggles and um, I realized that other people said to me, well, because I read that I started X, Y, and Z, I started my business or I started uh, running or whatever. And I was like, you know, this book is not only for me and my kids. It's, it's actually for all women out there who want to, uh, or men actually, because some men have read it and liked it. Um, uh, you know, who, who want, who need to hear this at some stage of their life or areas of the book, maybe not everything might resonate, but parts of the book will resonate and then. It, it is a good reminder. It's called It's Your Life. And it's a good reminder, you know, to grab your life and to grab the responsibility of your own life. And sometimes we need it. Where do you get time? I mean, time manage. I want to talk about time management. Many people say that, you know, a lot of people, I was one of them. I used to think that time is so less to do so many things. But I see you do blogging, write, write a book, 
that doing four kids and then uh, you are an entrepreneur you are a serial entrepreneur so how do you manage time can you give some tips to make more out of these 24 hours you know what it's it it's the the question that i get asked the most i guess is is this one of the questions you get asked the most yeah yeah okay. definitely because people okay. it appears that way but the thing is i am struggling with time like everybody else i guess so i want to say that first you know i mean it's obvious but i think if you have a passion for something and you really want to do something then you will find the time so at least that's for me i really wanted to write this book and for me if i set myself a date and i you know and this is the time and i will plan around it so planning huge 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 you need to if you want to do something and achieve something you need to plan it into your diary you need to plan ahead so that the whole family knows for the book for example my family knew that in march starting march i want to write this book so i mean then lockdown came so then everything changed but still because i had committed and i made a commitment to myself and i had told my family at least about it that i didn't want to disappoint myself and plus it was such a big passion that um, that I did find the time, I made the time. So it's a lot about putting it in your calendar. That's a nice one, that's a nice one. You don't find time, you make time. You make time, exactly. You put yeah. it in your calendar yeah. and you make time first and you plan around it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing mm -hmm. is prioritizing. If you know what is really important to you, so for me, it is my family exercising, um, and then obviously my business, which is like, it's my passion and then writing this book. So I make, that's my priorities. Everything else might not be as important and might not be as like perfectionist, you know, like maybe the going shopping, like, um, you know, at the moment we ran out of toilet paper in the house and, you know, that's not my priority at the moment. Yeah. So it's like, it's what you what you prioritize in your life and then not finding the excuses of oh actually i should go to the supermarket now i should go this or i i should meet this friend because he she really wants to meet me or you know like and then you postpone everything else no what is the priority in your life comes first i mean that's like a huge huge and then i make myself follow that and if i can't do it alone I get like accountability partners, groups, you know, like if if it's about working out, it's a really good example, going to the gym, you know, if you make an appointment with somebody and you're meeting somebody, you don't want to disappoint them. So if you say at seven o'clock, I will meet my friend and we will go for a run. If you made that commitment to your friend um, and you put it in your diary and your family knows it, then you will actually go and do it. So it's putting this little bit of pressure on yourself. And the last thing is I ask for help all the time. So I don't do all of this alone. You know, I have help mm -hmm. at home. I have help with the kids. I ask my husband a lot for his help and he's amazing to do that. Um, I have help with my business. So, you know, I have lots of people who help me. So I don't do all of this alone. And that's something mm -hmm. that is so important because you can't. I mean, you physically can't because our mm -hmm. days, they are everybody's days has 24 like 12 hours you mentioned about accountability partner so i know what is that but for the viewers can you explain what exactly do you mean by that it's a person who holds you accountable to what you've said so i used to have that a long time for my business for example so i had a friend who was in the same field also a website designer and she she was not a competitor but even if it's your competitor like or in the same area but she was living abroad so i would meet with her once a week and we would tell each other what we want to achieve until we meet again next week so and then if you don't do it and then maybe she would even check in with me have you done what you said to do today and so on so it is you are because somebody reminds you and that's sort of a deadline until next week you want to have this done and somebody will be there asking for it that's your accountability partner and it works really well for the business if you have specific tasks that you want to do it works really well for working out but even if you want to learn something new you know if this is an instrument or whatever it is that you want to learn having telling somebody 
that you want to do that and not wanting to disappoint that person and yourself, of course, is a great way of achieving goals. It's, it's actually one of the best ways, I think. And you can even be like, I could use, you know, this podcast for as an accountability partner sort of thing. I could, if I had a, like a new goal that I was working towards and I could put it out here, I do that sometimes. I announce it on the podcast because then I kind of don't want to let my, my listeners down. You know, I'm actually doing it and I'm reminding myself, you said this in public. So it's kind yeah. of everybody's holding you accountable. You know, somebody might ask someday, did you actually do that thing that you mentioned you wanted to do? So, yeah. So we can definitely have multiple accountability partners or probably the public can be our accountability partners. You just tell to them that what you're going to do, say it in public, right? If, if people are comfortable putting it on social media, they should do it. Put it on public that I'm going to do this and then do it. Uh, nice. So your, your book talks about, I think, negative judgment from people, uh, right? How to avoid negative judgment and all. So I want to ask you in this, uh, when we grow, when we do our personal development, we actually see that a lot of our friend circles are also negative minded, right? But we don't really want to lose them. We still want to be friends with them, but still not get affected by their negative thoughts and negative sayings. So how do you do that? Because not everybody wants to get away from their old friends. They still want to be friends with them. So how how to do that? Be still friends with them and still take only the positive from them and not the negative ones. Yeah, it's a good question. It's a really good question. I think, um, first of all, honestly, see how if you have negative friends or negative people in your life, see how negative are they really? Um, and how much is it really affecting you? If it's really affecting you, do you really need them in your life? You know, that's the first question I ask myself. Because of course it is affecting. Of course, if you, ha if you are around somebody who's always negative, you cannot change the other people. And um, you can't get rid of that negativity. You know, you have to deal with it yourself. So one way is, if you can't do it you're like in any other way, block that by spending less time with those people. I mean, that's the easiest way. And it is possible. It is. I, I have people that I really, really like in my life, but I know I cannot spend too much time with them. So I select, you know, I select the time that I spend with them because if I spend too much time, because and then I'm also more prepared that there might be negativity hitting me and but i can take it for you know a few hours or a day or so on but too long it affects me too much as well so really see yeah so that's one area and the other thing is just like you mentioned about making a priority list can we also make a priority list of people yeah. ah. sort of you can make <laughs> of course i mean without telling them yeah <laughs> yeah without telling them because i mean another thing is obviously talk to them about it you know, why not mm -hmm. talk to them about mm -hmm. it? But if it's not, um, if that's not pr most likely that is not the solution or not, not working for them, um, then mm -hmm. just spending less time with them. And it could be on social media. I had a friend telling me the other day that she always sees this one p person posting so negative. So one of her friends has like um, a way of seeing everything, posting everything that she posts in a negative way. So my friend also said, I'm not reading her posts anymore. I can't. It affects me too much. The picture might be nice, but I cannot read the post underneath because it just affects me too much. So protect yourself. If you know it affects you, protect yourself. And the other thing is, um, it's, your question actually has two things. Negativity and, and judgment is two things, I would say. But then f towards for negativity, I think... Um, lead by example, right? If you are the positive person, you spread positivity automatically. So if you are a super positive person and look for the positive things in life and see the things in a positive way, you spread. I mean, you spread love, you spread positivity. I mean, be the light, basically. And then other people will automatically, people around you will automatically be more positive. And then it reflects back to you and it reflects back to the outside. And um, if you can't be the one giving and being positive all the time, 
Look for some other people who are even more positive than you are. Be around them because that's going to reflect on you again. Then you can give it to other people that are maybe not so positive and then it reflects on you. I mean, it's so easy if you think about your immediate family. So if if I'm like in a super good mood and then my, one of my kids comes home from school being totally grumpy, you know, had a bad day at school or whatever, it immediately like drops my mood as well. Like my mood goes down and I'm like affected by it. Of course I am. But if I remind myself now, okay, let's bring on some music or let's crack a joke or whatever, you know, break this cycle of negativity from my kid, then he's going to laugh and he might, might forget about his day, you know. So we have like little tools that we do in our family. Just put on some nice music, um, even like sometimes at breakfast, everybody's grumpy and need to go to school and they don't want to. And then I just put on loud music to wake everybody up. And then people, or not people, my kids start smiling autom automatically. So I think mm -hmm. it was you put out there will come back to you. And then judgment. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but that's a big part of my book, actually, because I felt mm -hmm. so judged so many times in my life. And the thing is, um, I realized that people only judge you if they are insecure or if they are not happy. It's always a reflection of themselves. So that was the first, like, I had lots of steps that I taught myself. I, I don't feel, I mean, it's, I can't say I don't feel judged anymore because I still feel judged. Of course I do, but it doesn't affect me so much anymore. You know, because I either I think like I actually sometimes feel sorry for that other person judging me. And then I'm thinking mm -hmm. they don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. They don't know my big goals behind it. They don't know my dreams behind it. Why? Why I'm doing what I'm doing? So why can they judge me? They can't judge me. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's um, and then I just forget about it. And yeah, well, I it's the same thing with negativity. If they are too judgmental. And I'd spend less time with them, so it doesn't affect me so much anymore. So it's like be the change that you want to see in the world. Or uh, rather, you can say you cannot. Uh, one quote I like is that you cannot put carpet on the whole earth, so wear shoes. Oh, I've never heard that before. It's good. <laughs> nice yeah. one, right? That's a nice. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, and then even maybe leaving shoes that leaves or have shoes that leave footprints. You know, like ah, leave footprints, nice and then people nice follow and step on those footprints right right so i want to talk mostly i talk about uh, one topic in all with all my guests mostly which is positive thinking and what is the power of positive thinking okay so i want to know your uh, saying about positive thinking and how has positive thinking changed your life can you talk about that sure yeah, so I was a negative person, I would say. Looking back now, I think I was quite a negative person. I didn't think so at the time, but I could see, you know, problems in everything, difficulties, things that I had to overcome and so on. And life was hard in a way because I made it hard. Um, and now I'm like complete opposite. I think I see so much joy in everything and I... I trained myself to switch those thoughts, you know, what can I see? What positive can I see in this situation? There's always something positive that you can see or you can look for, you can you can search for. Sometimes you need to look a bit deeper and sometimes you need to wait. And the positive thing will only come visible way afterwards, after that that event happened, if it's an event. Um, so changing your thought patterns catching yourself when you have a negative thought and think really is it that bad or really is there not a solution um cutting specific words out of your vocabulary for example the word problem the you know this is a problem i don't I hardly say that and if i say that i catch myself and like no this is not a problem in every problem there's a solution or oh, instead of uh, cutting the word we can say change the word from problem to learning yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Change it around or I'm in the process of doing something, you know, like um, instead of um, saying I don't have enough time because it sounds so negative, say things like I have time for the most important things. So I'm making time for this that is important for me or I'm, I'm in the process of learning to manage my time even better, you know, like look for the positives and 
And then what re what has really helped me over the last few years is writing down a gratitude journal. So every morning mm -hmm. I write down things that I'm grateful for in my life. So I see the small positive things. I see, you know, that hot coffee that someone handed me or that smile that somebody smiled at me. I'm grateful for the smile. I'm grateful for the giggles of my children. I mean, there's like, there's so much going on in my life with the kids and it's hectic and it's loud and it's like not very organized. And, but actually what is most important is that my kids are happy and they are playing and they are laughing and, you know, they're healthy. So I'm, that's what I'm, you know, grateful for. I mean, yeah. And then I um, twisted my ankle last week, actually almost a week ago, I went for a run in the mountains and I twisted my ankle. And of course, that's like me li liking to be running and being super active and exercising every day. And now in Dubai, we have the 30 day fitness challenge going on. So you do like being active for 30 day, 30 minutes every single day for 30 days. And now it's, it's harder for me and I could be really negative about it. I could say, oh, why did it happen to me? Why didn't I, for one second, I didn't pay attention to the, to the road, you know, and then I flipped and, um, but I'm trying to see the positive side. So it's not as bad as it could be. You know, I can still train like my upper body is also causing me to rest a bit more. I have more time to work in the evenings because when I, when I would maybe exercise, so I, I, I make myself think about all the positive things that came with this and they are, you know, also good. Um, and then, and then I kind of forget about this foot and the negative things that come with it. And if I also am a strong believer that if you see the positive and if you don't like think about all the bad things that come with this foot, then it will heal faster. You know, if, if you if you tell yourself, I am healing, I am healthy. Um, I often do that when I when I have like a cold coming my way. I feel like, you know, when you're like a brink of bad, getting sick, then I tell myself, no, you're not getting sick. You're strong. Your body is healthy. Your immune system is really good. So you can fight this and it works. I'm it's like super strong believer in that it is working. You and must have read the book, The Secret. <laughs> it's like law of attraction it's training. it's training it's just practicing you know practicing thinking mm -hmm. about the positive things and being grateful for the little things they are the positives mm -hmm. in our life i mean it's it's such a gift that we are waking up every morning that we have a new day that a new chance in life a new we can try again you know if, even if you fail we can try again i mean that's amazing many people mm -hmm. can't and if you have food and a roof over your head and you're healthy. I mean, that's like, that's worth a million things. I mean, see, don't take it for granted. Don't mm -hmm. take that for granted. It can change in an instance. For me, it was only my ankle, but it, you know, things can change in an instance. So actually looking for those and being grateful for those things, it helps a lot, I think, to see the positive things. Okay. So my last question is, uh, which books, uh, have impacted you the most and uh, also please tell us what can readers find in your book what can they learn from it so my book is really about um, knowing that you have choices knowing that you can choose how you react you can choose your thinking to positive thinking you don't have negative you know, have to have negative thoughts. You can choose the people that you surround yourself with. Those are the topics that we talked about. But you can also choose to explore new things. You know, just because it has always been a certain way doesn't mean it has to be that way for you. You know, like my book is about following your heart, your dream, living your life instead of anybody else's not being affected by other people's opinions and judgment, um, but thinking about yourself and what you want out of life, following your own dreams, following your own passions, 
um, really digging deeper on how to find out what those dreams are, because sometimes we have forgotten about them. We had all these dreams and ideas when we were kids. But then when we grow up and life happens, we sort of forget about them sometimes. You know, life, everybody else wants something from you. Like you, you're giving and giving, especially moms, they give to their kids and husbands and families, and they are like the carer of the whole family. But then often they forget about themselves. So remembering that you need to put yourself first in order to pour from a full cup instead of an empty cup. Um, so looking after yourself, and that's not a selfish, that's not a selfish way, you know, it's just like, it's your life. So it's called, it's your life. So it's your life. So think about yourself first and then give to everybody else. So like, uh, you know, in an airplane, when, when they say, I was thinking about this example. Emergency. Yeah, exactly put on the, the oxygen mask on yourself first. And when I, mm. I always thought like, why on yourself first? I would always help other people. I would always help my kids first. But mm. the thing is, by that time, you might not be able to help somebody anymore, mm. you know, or, or you might not be able to help yourself anymore. So um, put yourself first. And yeah, so that's what my book is about. Nice, and nice. I have read, honestly, um, I have read so many books I, over the years. I mean, my personal development journey has begun when I was 20. Um, okay. okay. I would say so a long time I've read so many books, I've done like coachings, I've done seminars, so I've, I've done lots of different things. So I cannot really even pinpoint one book or one person that I've really changed. It was a series, I'm reading stuff and then I take, you know, a little bit from that book and a little bit from that person and a little bit from that coach and like, yeah. And, you know, from one person, I learned how to love myself. Um, from another person, I learned about judgment. From another book, it reinforced what I learned. So it's a com for me, it's a combination. I cannot really... But I mean, there are great people out there. And one person I do want to mention is Gabby, Gabrielle Bernstein. Mm, I know. Of mm. her books. I love her books. And actually, she, it's funny because um, she has a book out now. I love The Universe Has Your Back. I haven't read her books, but I listen to her podcasts and her talks on YouTube. Yeah. And what she does on Instagram, you know, this Dear Gabby every Wednesday is amazing. I think it's really she I love yeah and her honesty i mean yeah in her books she's very very honest and it takes a lot of courage to do that it takes that's also a part of my book like stepping out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. in order to achieve what you really want to achieve in order to live an even happier better life you need to do things that are not so comfortable um that's i'm a true believer in that i'm stepping out of my comfort zone every single day and then over time things become easier you know the very first time we did a podcast episode it was not in my comfort zone, you know, it was not like it was something new and I was scared and nervous. I mean, I'm sure you were the same. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, over time, yes. it has become so much easier, right? So now it's new things that challenge me. But yeah, going back to those books. So Gabby Bernstein, I, uh, I can really recommend her. Um, and it's funny, she has a book on audio, Audible now, which is very similar to my book. It's called... Okay. You're your own guru or something. It's more spiritual because okay. she's a very spirit spiritual person. But in a way, and I was mm. listening to it and my book was not yet out. And I was like, actually, this is so similar. You know, be your own boss, be your own guru. That's what she says. I think it, that's what the book is called. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So and then oh. there are some other people but I think if I had to pick one person at the moment, it's her. <laughs> All right, nice. So I'm I'm definitely gonna buy your book when it's there in India, and viewers should also buy it. So, anyways, it was great talking to you. I think viewers must have got lots of wisdom from you. So thank you so much, and namaste. Thank namaste. you. You know namaste. namaste. Thank you. In India, we say namaste. Yeah, namaste. namaste. I didn't know that you say that. I do that at, as my. I do a lot of yoga. Oh yeah. Okay. Even I do. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. You're much better than me. I'm I'm learning handstand and so on, but uh, <laughs> I can do a headstand now. Um, nice. Yeah, no, but namaste. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Thank and you. It's nice to meet you. Same here. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.